Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. I have another lovely little Prima Spring Farmhouse project to share with you. This is another one of my fun box gift cards. Um, here's the collection. I am loving this. You know, I wasn't going to buy any new paper. You ever make that promise to yourself? And I'm glad I broke my promise. This is such a beautiful collection. You can get this at the Funky Junkie Boutique online, and it is just glorious. I've used so much of this collection, um, and I save every little scrap because it's just so beautiful. Anyway, so I worked with the 12 by 12 papers. I also used some of the four by six journaling cards. And these are such a great way to stretch your collection. Bees, I love bees. I don't know why I love, well, I love bees because I love honey. So great collection. Um, so we'll just take a look at the cover. This is a six by six box. This is based on, I think they used to call this a joy fold card, where you have a smaller card that flaps over another. I just took it dimensional. Um, I saw this, at my buddy Ginny Nemchak, um, her Polly, Polly's Paper Studio YouTube channel, and then I adapted to add the dimension. So I have one inch spines, and on the front cover, I've layered up um, papers and images, some little ribbon flags. These little words are from My Mind's Eye Gingham Farm. They just go perfectly with this collection. So are the stars. This is from the Ephemera Pack that comes that um, you can purchase to go with the collection and these are the flowers and what I did to this flower I'll just hold it up so you can see it this was just a plain pink flower so first I brushed it lightly with walnut stained distress ink just around the edges to add a little depth then I came back with some ivory chalk paint dry brushed that onto the petals and then I finished it with a few squirts of an iridescent gold glimmer and I don't know if the camera picks up the glimmer but it is so beautiful and shabby chic in person of course I did that to the leaves as well these are some old petaloo berries that I had in my stash an ivory double face satin ribbon from really reasonable ribbon so for this wreath I used my graphic 45 square tag and clock die but I just used the frame and this is a really this is such a delicate intricate um, frame and sometimes I worry with those that they will get torn so I found a little solution I tap it thoroughly with Versamark ink and then I come back and I emboss it with a layer of Seth Apter vintage beeswax embossing baked texture. I let it cool, I give it a second treatment, and it becomes almost like, um, it's like really strong, almost like plastic. It's really cool, but the vintage beeswax goes really well with the bee theme for this album. These are Prima flowers, and then on the spine, I added a vintage pink button from my stash and a cute little house. And here's a look at the back. So um, this is a little bulldog clip and I just dressed it up with burlap string and a prima flower and then that holds this open. This is a really fun fold and I do have a tutorial following um, this little video tour. So that little clip holds this velvet bookmark in place over here. Isn't this sweet? I've had this in my stash forever. This is an old Webster's Pages goodie. And it just, the colors and the rows and the little bird work perfectly with this collection. This is fussy cut from the paper collection and just brushed with ink, glued down. And I've double matted with brown and pink cardstock. I just love the dimension that gives and it also makes it very sturdy. So over here on the right, I created a little pocket by fussy cutting the roses from the four by six added an ephemera, and then this is actually a magnet. Isn't that cute? I just circle die cut the image from the um, ephemera, pack, from the journal pack, and stitched around it, adding this burlap trim, and then Prima flowers, and this will stick on your refrigerator or desk. I just thought that was really cute. And then in the center, of course, is the box pocket, which is the key to this whole project, and I will show you how to create this. And um, inside the pocket, I've put in some sweet treats. Here are some chocolate-covered Biscoff 
that I just wrapped with designer paper, added a butterfly, a Ghirardelli chocolate. This is a little tea bag wallet with a belly band. And to do this, you just wrap a strip of, this was just a scrap, and I just take the scrap, I gently fold it over the sides of my little folio that I created, also from a scrap, and then take it off, you know, bend it gently, then take it off and score it on my scoring tool, and then you know it's gonna meet up just right. And then the folio is also just a scrap, a long strip that I had, and it just happened to be the right size. It's almost, because it's a scrap, it's almost three and a quarter by, let me see, six and a half plus a little over an inch. So about almost seven and three quarters. Again, it was just a scrap, but I looked at it and went, oh, that will work. And then you just score it and fold and adhere the sides to make the little tea bag wallet. So that's a fun little thing. And then the belly band just slips on and off easily and then this is a vintage silver plate spoon that I have picked up in one of my travels these are becoming rarer and rarer treasures but it was just too perfect for this project not to add it in there so that's the project stick around we will come back and we will learn how to build the base we will learn how to build the box style pocket we will I'll give you all the dimensions and everything for matting, all the paper layers, and then you'll be able to make these. Oh, and a honey stick. I forgot, I always forget the honey stick, but it's in there. And then this little clip is just there to hold these little um, Z folds. And you can make this any size you want. I've done several different sizes for the card that goes inside the card. This one happens to be four and a half by five, four by five and a half. So hang around, we'll do the tutorial next and you can learn how to make these. Don't go away, I'll be right back. Okay guys, so let's get going on this little tutorial. I have a piece here of ivory cardstock that is 13 by six. And if you don't have 13 inch long cardstock, you can join, you can cut eight and a half by 11 to six inches high and then join in the spine with score tape. And I have, videos on my channel that show you how to do that so I won't do it again here but for this one that is 13 we're going to put this on our scoring tool and we're going to score it at three six and seven the six and the seven are going to be the spine and then the three inch score is going to flip back like this to make kind of a, a V if you will so then you want your smaller card that's gonna fit inside the bigger one. This is 10 by five and a half and score at four and a half and five and a half. Very, very simple. And then this is just going to be attached like this. So quick and easy. Let me get my patterned papers and we'll start putting it together. I'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see, I've matted um, the six by six card. And I'll just give you these dimensions very quickly. With the brown card stock, I went five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. And with the pink, I went five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So basically I'm going down an eighth of an inch, um, six by six, five and seven eighths, five and three quarters. So the same thing here on the spine you want to go um, seven eighths of an inch by, the height's gonna be the same, five and seven eighths. And then this little pink one is three quarters by five and three quarters. And then for your little fold back parts, these panels are gonna be two and seven eighths by five and seven eighths and two and three quarters by five and three quarters. And then your patterned paper for this in over here, I chose this pretty um, foiled uh, bumblebee. And this is cut to five and five eighths by five and five eighths. And I've inked the edges with walnut stain distress ink. And that's just a personal preference you certainly don't have to do that. And I'm just adding some 
um, adhesive. And a quick word about liquid adhesive. The big mistake that everyone makes with liquid adhesive is that they add too much and they add it too close to the edge. You wanna go back about a fourth of an inch from the edge of your paper and then just add a thin bead. And this is a very disreputable, I keep refilling this. This is Art Glitter Dries Clear Adhesive. Um, and you can get this at Country Craft Creations and you can also get it at Heartfelt Creations. So for this little piece in the middle, I want to use this brown gingham, which I've already inked up. But before I do that, I want to show you a great trick. Sometimes I like to work with my scraps and sometimes you need to cut a really thin piece of paper. And I learned this from my crafty buddy, Ginger Rop. And here's a little scrap, we'll just take this. Ginger Rop, my sister's scrapper. So let's say we want to just cut off this part with the gilded butterfly. It's tricky to do that and hold it in place. But if you take your post-it note, stick the post-it on the paper, then you can line everything up so that it's perfect. And you can just cut just like that. Very simple. So thank you, Ginger Rop, my sister scrapper. You're a genius and we love you. So there's a little tip. All right, so now we're just gonna adhere this in. And I'm just gonna kinda do a scribble down the center. Then this piece will actually be our front cover. So I want this to be the brown gingham pattern. And then we just need to cover these two panels. And I want to lay this flat, this on the outside. I just love this paper. And it's a really ugly winter day here in North Carolina. I mean, the sky is black out there. If I believed in snow in North Carolina, I would say it was going to snow, but it's dry. So we're not going to get snow, but it is cold and dark and gloomy. So working with this beautiful spring pattern is just so much fun. And I was going to put the bunnies down, but that kind of limits it. So I think I want to put my heart pattern down. And I can see I trimmed this a little bit wrong. So... going to trim a little bit of that edge so that it fits easier. I have different trimmers and you know what I've learned? This is a weird thing. Different trimmers, an inch is not always an inch. Inches vary from trimmer to trimmer and you wouldn't think that would be the case, but I have certainly found it to be so. So I try to use the same trimmer um, throughout a project, but sometimes I switch over from one to the other. So this sweet little dot pattern on the back is like a neutral. And then we just have one more spine here to put down. And I want my butterfly to be right side up. So this is all ready to go. And it will look like this. So now we'll bring in this four and a half by five and a half, and we're just gonna do the same thing. Now here's what you have to remember. You're making this backwards because this is gonna be glued down here and your spine is actually going to be on the right, which is the opposite of the way you would normally do things. So bear that in mind as you're adding in your papers. Now this is gonna be my pocket page here. So I'm gonna add this here. And you're gonna do the same thing here. You're just gonna go down an eighth of an inch with each of your layers, just as you did on the six by six card. So I don't think we need, do we need to go over that again? I kind of don't think we need to. 
just go down an eighth of an inch. And if you're a quarter of an inch border girl, then do a quarter of an inch. I like eighth of an inch. And then, what do we got? I want this sweet little floral here. And now, just so you can watch me mat this page, I'll bring in some cardstock and we'll just do this part together and then you get the measurements we want. So we're four and a half, so we want this to be four and three eighths inch wide. By five and three eighths inch tall. And then for the pink, we're gonna go down to four and a quarter. Five. Five and a quarter. And now we'll just map this. Okay, so this is our inside, this is our outside, this is our cover. And what I've done is I've matted, I had this little scrap that wasn't quite the right size, so I matted it um, on pink and brown to make it fit and then popped it up on some, um, I use my priority mailboxes that my design team packages come in or um, Amazon purchases come in and cut those up and this is going to go we're just going to kind of center this the best we can make sure we cover everything up best we can and this is going to be our cover like that now give me a minute i'll be back and we'll start building our box for the inside here that's the next step so for building the box pocket, you have to take the width and then you have to figure out how deep you want your pocket to be. In this case, I want my pocket to be 3 fourths of an inch deep so that it will close neatly inside my one inch spine. And you have to score two 3 quarter inch panels on each side, which is three inches. So for this particular one, we have seven for our width because four plus three is seven because three quarters and three quarters is an inch and a half and an inch and a half is three inches. And then for the depth, I want my pocket to be two and a quarter inches deep. So same formula, three fourth inch score lines, that's an inch and a half, two and a quarter plus an inch and a half is three and three quarters. So that's what we have. You knew those fractions you learned in fourth grade would come in handy someday. So we're going to put the short side on our scoring tool. And I'm just going to score three quarters and three quarters. And I'm going to put it on the long side and I'm going to score three quarters and three quarters. And it's easier for me to flip this. I go one, two, three quarters, and one, two, three quarters. So now we've got this little box. Bring in your scissors and completely cut away the outer rectangle 
on each side. And cut this as neat and trim as you can. Get in there and just fix that. Then move over to the next score line and just cut straight up and just leave that. Okay? So you've got these little flaps here. Fold these up. Fold these in. Take your adhesive. Well, I guess we'll fold these first. Your sides. All right. Now, at this point, if you want to cut a thumb hole, which I do, you need to do that with your die. And I'll show you how to do that very quickly. Now, because I'm basically lazy, I want to go ahead and cover this before I do my die cutting. So I need a piece of paper that is seven inches long by two and a quarter inches deep. Let me go through my scraps. And see what I can find. So we're just going to cut this. Always use scraps if you can. And seven. And just to make it so that this fits nicely, I'm going to go ahead and add my score lines. And ink my edges because it's easier to do that now than it is to do that later. And I'm going to add my adhesive. Don't put any adhesive down there on the bottom. You're not doing that yet. And line this up, just like that. Okay, so now we're ready to place our die. I've put a little tiny bit of scotch tape. This is just a standard circle die that is three inches in diameter. And I'm gonna look at where I want this to be. And that looks, actually, it looks like I got it pretty even. Let me just double check. It's almost three quarters, almost three quarters. That was pretty darn good. All right, so I'm gonna run this through my die cutting machine. And just whatever your sandwich is, run it through. Okay, so I ran it through, and I'm just carefully removing my scotch tape, and look, it's just perfect. And I started doing this when my circle punch died, and I just got so frustrated with buying circle punches, and sometimes they didn't like the thick paper, so I just started doing this with my dies, and I actually really love the way it looks. So now, to assemble this, I'm going to put it face down. I'm going to put adhesive on these little flaps. These are just gonna roll in. And you, this is where you wanna keep it square. And I want to adhere those inside the bottom of my pocket. Just like that. And then just use your bone folder Settle that in. I'm going to bring these around and place adhesive on the back for these little flaps. Then 
just go in there with my bone folder and make sure those little flaps on the bottom are secure. And that looks pretty straight. I'm pretty happy with that. That looks good. And sometimes I use a paper clip just to hold that until the glue sets up. But then the last thing I do is I just cut a little triangular piece off the back because then it doesn't show from the front. If you need to go back in and ink along these creases, go ahead and do that. Then bring in your base. And you can put the pocket here or you can put the pocket here. It's totally your call. I want it here, so that's where I'm going to put it. And you can use score tape, you can use Tombow, you can use whatever you like. I'm just a believer in this Art Institute. I love this adhesive. So that goes there, just like that. Straighten up these sides a little bit. There we go. And I like to come in with my bone folder. You know, a bone folder is probably one of the cheapest crafting accessories you can buy, and I use it all the time. Get a bone folder. If you're going to be doing dimensional stuff like this, it's, it's just a great tool. All right, so there's our box pocket. See, that closes over it just as nice as you please. We can fill that up with goodies, and this is going to be adhered right in the center of this panel, just like this. In fact, I think we'll go ahead and do that. And just checking it top and bottom, side to side, making sure we're straight. All right. Placing my adhesive on that back panel. pretty good. Now again, I'm going to come in with my little bone folder. And see, then this is just going to go right over the front like this. Nice as you please.